found yourself in a fix and you knew that if it had not been for God on your side that you would be in trouble. Psalm 16 and 1 says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord. My goodness extended not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasteth after another God. The drink offerings of blood will I not offer nor take up their name into my lips. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my lot. I want to talk to you this morning from a simple word. And I just want you to look at your neighbor and tell him satisfied. Satisfied. Amen. Now I, I want to ask you, are you satisfied with Jesus? Amen. Are you satisfied with Jesus? Father, we bless and we thank you this morning for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, God, for how you've watched over us and protected us. And Father, we thank you, Lord God, for uh, you being such an awesome God. That even in our struggles, you rescue us. Even when our faith is not where it ought to be, God, that you motivate us. We pray, God, this morning that as your word goes forth, that it goes forth with clarity and with understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. The songwriter said that I'm satisfied with Jesus. And you know, I, I believe as we look at Psalms 16, we can attribute a lot of suffering that David had to go through. But, but David said, even though I'm suffering, I'm satisfied with God. And can I tell you this morning that that's the kind of attitude that you've got to have if you're going to walk in victory in this life. Be be because the Bible lets us know that many are the afflictions of the righteous. It, it says, but God delivered them out of all of them. And, 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 and so when uh, we look at these same passages of Scripture, from the Message Bible, it, it, it says it like this Psalm 16 and 1. It says, keep me safe, O God. Because how many know that trouble is lurking all around us? But if I know that I'm in the hands of the Lord, I can lay down and have a good night's sleep. Now, even if my job is on the brink, uh, I can still feel safe because God is my provider. But even when my health is acting up, I, I can still feel safe because God is my healer. But even when, when my kids uh, are not acting right, uh, God is the one who knows uh, how to straighten them out. Uh, when life deals me a bad hand, uh, I can still feel safe uh, because I'm in the arms uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and so he, he says, keep me safe, O oh God. He says, I've, I've, I've run for dear life to you. Uh, I, I'm not running to anybody else, uh, but God, I'm running to you uh, because you are my real help. Uh, how many know sometimes you got some fake help? 
Well, well let, let me break that down to you. Uh, amen. The only reason they hang with you, uh, amen, is because you pay for everything. Uh, the only reason they hang around you uh, is because they're weak uh, and you are fully uh, empowered by God. Uh, you are a weapon against the enemy. Uh, and, and they come to pull on uh, your anointing. Uh, amen. But, but you know, I can feel safe in God. Uh, knowing that God, uh, amen, has got my back. Uh, and so David said, Lord, you're the only one uh, I can run to. Uh, amen, you're the only one uh, that I can really feel safe. Uh, amen, talking with someone yesterday, they, they, they said that they realized, uh, amen, that they had a car and they had all these friends, look at your neighbor, and said, until the car broke down. Uh, and then they come to really understand uh, that, that they were not, uh, amen, uh, their friend. Uh, they were friends with the car. Uh, uh, amen. Uh, amen. But, 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 but David said, I got a friend uh, uh, that's going to stick closer than a brother. Uh, I, I got a friend that wakes me up. Uh, amen. I, I, I got a friend, uh, amen, that fills uh, every empty void in my life. I, I got a friend that I can call on, uh, not only when I'm up, but when I'm down, uh, when I don't know what to do. Uh, look up today and say, I need uh, that kind of friend. Uh, amen. And, and, and so listen to what he says. Uh, the, he says, I run to you for dear life. Uh, verse 2 from the message Bible, I say to God, uh, be my Lord, uh, amen, without you, uh, nothing makes sense. Uh, how many times have you scratched your head uh, trying to figure out what God is doing? God, uh, but look at your neighbor and say, I'm satisfied with Jesus. Uh, uh, oh, y'all don't sound like you're really satisfied this morning, God. Uh, now, I can preach this with you or without you, uh, amen, but I'm satisfied with Jesus. Uh, amen. Uh, when everybody else let me down and didn't believe, uh, amen, that we were Will be where we are today. Uh, Jesus told me uh, you can make it. Uh, and look at your name and tell him uh, Jesus is speaking to you right now uh, and telling you uh, you can make it uh, to the storm. But uh, I don't care about uh, how the boat is rocking. Uh, look at your name uh, and say, I'm satisfied uh, with Jesus. Uh, amen. And, 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 and so listen to what he says. And, uh, he, he says that nothing makes sense uh, without you, Lord. And, uh, now all these folks that are confused and mixed up, uh, here is your answer. Uh, get Jesus in your life. Uh, because he's the only one uh, that can make sense of uh, what you're going through. And, uh, rather you understand. And, uh, because some things you're not going to understand. And, uh, until after you've been through it. Uh, it meant sometimes uh, you got to go through uh, in order to understand uh, uh, that while you were going through, uh, God uh, was doing something in you. Uh, it meant, you said, well, preacher, that don't make sense. Uh, well, if it made sense, it wouldn't be God. Uh, because the Bible says my ways uh, are not like your ways. Uh, and my thoughts are uh, I'm not like your thoughts. Uh, oh, come on, look at your neighbor. Say, satisfied. Uh, oh, man. Oh, oh, man. Amen. Amen. Uh, look at your neighbor. Say, satisfied with Jesus. Satisfied with Jesus. Amen. Now, listen to what he says here in, in, in verse 3. Uh, he says, in these God-chosen lives uh, all around, uh, what splendid friends they make. Uh, if, if you want a real friend, uh, you need somebody uh, that's got the same God, uh, amen, that you got. Uh, because all those half converted folks, uh, uh oh, they Oh, yes, I did. Uh, they, they'll pull you down, drag you down, uh, but you need somebody uh, that's got the same passion, uh, the same fervor, uh, the same God, uh, the same values. Uh, you don't need some watered down person uh, telling 
you, it don't take all of that. Uh, let me tell you, uh, you're not going to make it in the rage uh, trying to play patty cake with God. Uh, but you got to make it up in your mind. Uh, lock, stock, and barrel. Uh, I'm going all the way with Jesus. Uh, Amen. And, and, and now listen to what he says here in verse 4. Uh, he says, don't just go shopping uh, for a God. Uh, well, uh, preacher, what do you mean? Uh, well, well no, I can't go to that church because they're too strict over there. And so I, I'm going to go to this church over here. Uh, and you, you, you know, so it, it'll line up with my lifestyle. Uh, no, baby. Um, uh, you need the God of the universe uh, because he's already created the path to peace and tranquility. You need the same God, uh, amen, that they said that I am come, uh, that you may have life, uh, and that you may have it more abundantly. Look at your other neighbor and tell them gods uh, are, are, are not for sale. Uh, 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 not, baby, my God, you can't pay him enough to, to slip into heaven. Uh -huh. I, I, I don't care, you could be fourth, fifth, sixth generation, uh, amen, but if you don't live according to the word, uh, look at your neighbor saying, hell, uh, will you lift up your eyes? Uh, uh, you say, come on, preacher, oh, it's the gospel, baby, amen, you, your money won't get you there, uh, your name won't get you there, uh, your reputation won't get you there, uh, the only thing that's going to get you to heaven, uh, amen, is a committed life to the Lord. Jesus Christ. Mm. Uh, amen. Amen. And, and so listen to what he says. Uh, amen. He says, I, I, I swear I'll never treat God's name like a brand name. Uh-huh. You know what? Everybody, listen, if the God of the universe is in you, you ought to be different. You want to be like everybody else. Everybody strolling in got the same thing. Now, you know, that, that, that really don't bother me, but let two women come in with the same outfit on. Watch one of them go home and change. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, I know I've not been in this thing a while. <laughs> she got my outfit on. As if they only made it for you. Um, um, he said, well, let, let me tell you the God that we serve. He said, he's not a brand name God. He said, when people see you, well, they ought to know that you're saved. Uh, oh, y'all, look at your name and say, y'all ain't going to like me. Amen. Because in verse 5, he says, uh, my choice is you. Uh, God first and only. Amen. And, 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 and so when when we look at this word satisfy, it, it means that I'm pleased. Are you pleased with the God that you serve? Are you pleased with the, the, the God that pulled you up out of the muck and the mouth? Are you pleased with the God that healed your body when others said you wasn't going to make it? Uh, are you pleased? with the God that uh, you should have got life, but God gave you grace uh, and released you uh, amen, from the gated community. Uh, I'm not talking about the gated community where you punch in the cold. Uh, I'm talking about the gated community where there's barbed wire. Uh, amen. And police uh, or officers standing uh, just in case you try to tip out unauthorized. Uh, God pulled you up out of all of that. Uh, least you could do. Look at your name. Uh, it's a, it is to serve him uh, with all of your heart. Uh, can I tell you this morning that a lot of believers are missing out on the blessings of God uh, because of their stubbornness. Uh, amen. Uh, what do you mean, preacher? Uh, amen. Wanting to have your own way uh, and move uh, and change uh, our ways uh, when it's convenient for us. Uh, 
But let me tell you, uh, amen, uh, amen, God, uh, amen, is a real God, uh, and God doesn't uh, work on our time. Uh, amen, when God says move, uh, guess what, uh, you gotta move. Uh, when God says turn, guess what, uh, you gotta turn. Uh, but if you're satisfied with God, uh, you're not going to uh, looking for another God. Uh, if you're satisfied with God, uh, you're not ashamed to tell somebody else uh, that I'm a believer. Uh, God. You're not ashamed uh, to tell somebody uh, that you need Jesus uh, in your life. Uh, uh, amen. Can I tell you here, the real reality is, uh, is that God doesn't operate on our time. Uh, amen. Well, you know, I'm going to get myself together. Uh, uh, look at your neighbor and say, how long uh, is it going to take uh, for you to give your half saved self together? Uh, oh, did he say half saved? Half saved. Uh, you almost there. Uh, but I'm going to know that almost uh, is not going to get you to heaven. Uh, uh, you've got to be 100% committed to God. Uh, you've got to quit sliding, uh, slipping and sliding. Uh, and say, well, I'm in church today to Mind. I don't know. No, maybe you gotta make your mind up, but if you're satisfied with Jesus, you, you, you're not looking for another God. You're not looking for a brand name God. But you want the God of the universe, the one that spoke the heavens into existence. Because if you're satisfied with God, it means that you are content with him. Amen. If, if you're satisfied with God, it means that you have been fulfilled. All space is covered. You are saturated in his anointing. And you're lacking for nothing. When you're full, you don't keep going to the table, do you? Look at your neighbor. And ask him, are you satisfied? Are you satisfied? Uh, because if you're satisfied, uh, you're not trying to slip and slide. Uh, if you're satisfied, uh, you'll come running over in God. Let me tell you the quickest way for you to lose popularity is when you don't let people do what they want to do, uh, amen, and still call it holiness. Uh huh. See, but we gain more anointing from God uh, when uh, we are not worrying about being popular with people. Uh, and so today I pose the question to you. Uh, amen. Do you want to be popular with people uh, or do you want to be anointed by God? Uh, amen. Because people will come and go. Uh, you say, preach, I don't believe that. Uh, well, uh, I brought my King James with me this morning. Uh, you remember they say, hold down up to the highest. Uh, pulled out the pumpkins. Uh, amen. They said, hold down up. Uh, oh, they were lifting up Jesus. Uh, if it wasn't long after that, uh, they said, crucify you. My. Well, that's how people will do you. Uh, they'll praise you one moment. Uh, and before you can turn your back, uh, they got a knife uh, already ready to stab you. Uh, but I don't know about you, uh, but I'm satisfied with Jesus. Uh, and if it means uh, I never get to the White House, uh, that's all right. Uh, but if it means uh, I never get to the stadium, uh, that's all right. Uh, but if uh, I could be pleased the God, uh, if I can have the anointing, uh, the man that breaks the yoke, uh, that open up the blind eyes, uh, to lay hands on the sick, uh, and they recover, uh, to cast out demons uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, that the price uh, you must be willing to pay uh, for the anointing uh, of God on your uh, don't let the devil uh, in all of his ills uh, keep playing with your mind. 
and God is telling you you're not like everybody else. Look at your neighbor and say, News Flash. Yeah, you're not supposed to be like the world. Amen. You're not supposed to be like everybody else. Amen. And when you understand that there's a calling on your life, when you understand that, amen, that the calling is going to cost you something, God. You're not going to stand uh, before God's people uh, uh, without any battle scars. Uh, you're not going to be able to sing uh, with an anointing uh, if you don't have a story. Uh, if you've never been through anything, uh, how can you tell somebody uh, how good God really is? Uh, you need uh, your own testimony. Uh, amen. And so when we when we really understand, uh, amen, that when you are satisfied with God, uh, amen, you're not trying to please men uh, and women uh, who want to live a life, uh, look at your neighbor, say, full of question marks. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to get that one on the way home. Uh -huh. A life full of question marks. Uh -huh. what, what, what do you mean? They, they say they say, but the way they dress, you think they're trying to hook up with Jack the Ripper. <laughs> the way they dress, amen, uh, or, or, or their lifestyle is it, not conducive to the gospel of deliverance. Because when Jesus sets you free, he pulls you up out of the muck and the mire, of God, and he places you, look at your neighbor, on a new platform. That, that, that some of us, we keep stepping off a platform. And, and, and we're trying to get down here with everybody else. But let me tell you, e -e -e man, not that you are better, but God makes you better. And because he makes you better, he has pulled you, uh, amen, out of uh, the pig pen. Yes. That's good. And now he's got a place for you in the palace. Yes. You know what I like about the palace is climate control. Come on now. Somebody say, help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. In the pig pen, uh, there's some of everything going on. And you just throw anything to it. But, but when Jesus comes into your life, then uh, your life ought to be better. Yes. He, 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 man, David said it like this. He, he, he said, he, he, man, in Psalms 34 and 19, he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. He said, but the Lord delivered them uh, out of all of them. Uh, now, I, I think if anybody understood suffering, uh, David did. Now, be, be, because one uh, commentator said that there were 32 attempts by Saul on the life of David. And some of us are wondering, they looked at me crazy. 32 times somebody tried to take you out. How do you sleep at night if you're not satisfied with God? How do you know who to trust when you're going through what you're going through? Now, here's the thing. David had not done anything to Saul. It, 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 man, but this is an example. Look at your names and get this. This is an example of simple jealousy can develop into secret hostility and then open hostility amen which will lead to self destruction of the person who is harboring the jealousy you, you see sometimes you haven't done anything to the person that's jealous of you they, they're just jealous because they don't have what you have. 
But let me tell you that God gives everybody an ability. And so you got to take your ability and make it work for you. Everybody can't sing. Amen. But take whatever that gift is that God has given you and make it work for you. Amen. 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 You, you know, sometimes the situations can deteriorate so that separation in demand of individuals is the best thing. Now, and, and, and that was the conclusion that David had to come up to. Amen. Not that I don't love the king, uh, not that I don't respect his position, uh, but his jealousy is out of control. Amen. And because it's out of control, David said the best thing for me, uh, amen, rather than uh, not respect him, uh, the best thing for me is to separate and give God an opportunity to deliver him. Uh, did, did you get that part? Give God an opportunity, not for you to get back. It, it's not your job to get back at people. I can't get no help up in the air. In, 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 in Psalm 50, Nine, it reflects on how David was feeling during that period of time in a time of intense strain. How do we cope with what's going on? Well, David found his strength to endure the assaults a man of Saul by reaffirming his trust in God. And, and, and you know, when the heat is on, uh, that's when you need to dig into God even more. Uh -huh. when, when things are not going right, it, it's not time to throw your hands up and give up on God. Uh, but you need to be saying, oh God, I need you more now than I've ever needed you. Uh, he, he, man, you, you know, Saul was such a jealous man. Uh, the Bible said that he tried to give his own son, Jonathan, uh, to murder David. Uh, but, but Jonathan said, no, I can't do that. Uh, I, I won't do that. Uh, and, and he didn't stop there. Uh, he, 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 he tried to get his daughter to murder her own husband. Uh, and she says, uh, I won't be a part of that. Uh, amen. And she said, David, you've got to get out of here tonight uh, because my daddy is going to send uh, some men over amen, to take you out. Uh, but let me tell you, uh, when you're satisfied with Jesus, uh, he will give you uh, an escape route. Uh, amen. Because the enemy thought he had him. Uh, amen. But the Spirit of the Lord uh, had already promised uh, I will be your protection. Uh, amen. And, 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 and let me show you how David was such a good man. Twice he could have taken Saul out. But, but, but he didn't. He said because uh, you are God's anointed. And because he was God's anointed, the Bible says that he, he didn't take him out. And then finally, Saul said, I'm not going to bother you anymore. Now, he said that when he was calm. Because, you, you know, we can make all kinds of promises when we come. But, but when, uh, you, 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 you know, the meter get up on 10 uh, 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 or 100. We forgot all about what we said we were going to do. And so David said, even though he told me, man, that he was going to never bother me again, David said, I, I, I can't go back home until Saul is no longer on the throne. He, 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 man, and, 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 and so uh, as we look at Psalms 16, we, we, we see in the life of David here, he, 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 man, the, the, the practice of a godly man. I, I, I want you to get that because 
David's life was always in danger during the turbulent years, amen, when he fleed from King Saul. Did, did, did you get that? His life was always uh, in danger. You know, God doesn't keep us under constant pressure. But David's life was under pressure all of that time, but he kept his focus on God. You see, there, there, there were times when the danger was active, e e e man, but, but then on two noble occasions when David deliberately e e man, spared Saul's life, Saul called off the hunt and, and left David in peace. Because David showed him that I, I, I could have took you out. But, but see, David is practicing uh, he, he meant a godly life. Uh, or I, I'm talking to somebody that wants to be like Peter before he got converted. Pull out your sword and cut somebody's ear off. Somebody say, help me, Lord Jesus. Uh -huh. See, now, 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 even though he, he, man Saul said, I'm not going to bother you anymore, David, he was still an outlaw, cut off, a man from his family, a man and from his inheritance, a man in the land. Uh, a man, and, and so your anointing is going to cost you something. You hear folks all the time, I want to be used by the Lord. You better be careful yeah. what you say. Yeah. God, God's got to give you a testimony first. Yes. You don't get your crown without no suffering. On, you don't get your crown without no disappointment. On, you don't get your crown unless you put in the work. David put in the work and so by the time uh, he was anointed king, uh, David had a story. Amen. And can I tell you today that God's trying to give some of us a story. Amen. Not, not only was he cut off from the land, but he was cut off from the temple. Because David loved uh, he, he, man, going and worshiping God. But David said that, you know, I've got to learn how to give God praise wherever I am. That's a message to somebody. Well, I can't pray unless I'm at church. Baby, you're going to be in trouble. Because sometimes you need to steal away on the job. But sometimes when you're in that line at the grocery store, and uh, if somebody jumped in front of you, uh, you need to say, help the Lord Jesus, because if you don't, it's not going to be nice. Can I preach to the real church today? Mm -hmm. you, 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 you know, because some of y'all act like you, you, you know, you got your wings already. Uh -huh, but... The truth of the matter is we, we're all still working on those weeds. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so uh, in, in what, 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 what we see is that there was danger for a long time as long as King Saul was on the throne. Amen. But David demonstrated, amen, with, with, with Saul in, in the language that he used, uh, he echoed that I could have taken you out. But what he was saying was that that wouldn't be the godly thing to do. Uh, amen. Because some of us may have some arrogance on folks, uh, but look at your name and say, is that the godly thing to do? Amen. And so David in, 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 in this psalm, uh, Amen. He, he, he says that God is the only one that can help me. See, because David realized that I've got to learn how to live, uh, amen, in the Lord's presence. Uh, amen. Because if I live in the Lord's presence, uh, he'll lead me, he'll guide me, he will direct me, uh, he will calm me down uh, when I need to be calmed down. Uh, he'll tell me to close my mouth uh, when I need to close it. Uh, sometimes we get in trouble uh, because we won't close our mouth. 
justified. He said, you may have the right to say it, but is it the right time, amen, to say it? Look up your neighbor and say, help me, Lord Jesus. Amen, amen. Sometimes you got to Look, I, I, I told somebody yesterday, amen, that when you have a discussion, uh, you got to be like the preacher. Uh, you got to have a close. Uh, amen. What, 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 what do you mean? I said the preacher go close three times. Uh, I said, but when the preacher close, he's going to Calvary. Uh, well, because at Calvary is where we get our deliverance. Uh, amen. And, and so in your conversation, uh, quit bringing up all all of the dirty laundry yeah, that happened 50 years ago. Uh, because here's what happens. Uh, if a person is not delivered to the when they do it again, uh, that's when you bring up the incident. Uh, and you don't have to drag in all of the dirty laundry. Uh, deal with the here and the now. Just imagine if Jesus brought up all of our dirty love. Uh, but you know what he does? Uh, he deals with us in the present. Uh, uh, he speaks to you. Uh, and he lets you know, uh, he meant that I am come, uh, that you may have life uh, and that you may have it more abundantly. Uh, he meant, listen to what David said when he said, live in the presence of the Lord. He said, preserve me, O God. For in thee do I put my trust. He said, Oh, my soul, thou hast said unto me, uh, unto the Lord, Thou art my Lord, uh, and my goodness extends to thee. And so if we could ever learn to live in the presence of God, uh, God says, Then uh, I can bless you. Uh, amen. Because sometimes the situation doesn't look like it's going to turn out right. Uh, but look at your neighbor say, but God. Uh, amen. And, 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 and so when, when we look at the text, David uses three words for God in these two short sentences. Uh, he is El, which is uh, Jehovah. Uh, and he is Adonim. Uh, 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 he, he, he's El and Jehovah and Adonim. Now he is El. El is an abbreviation uh, formed for the name of Elohim. Uh, God, the creator. Uh, how many know that God can create uh, amen, a situation uh, of victory uh, in the midst of your defeat? Uh, he, if he can create the world, guess what? Uh, he can recreate yours. Uh, he said, but all you got to do uh, is just hold on to him. Uh, and say, El, uh, uh, God, I need you. Elohim, uh, I need you to create uh, a new atmosphere. Uh, because the atmosphere that I'm in, uh, it is defeat and failure. Uh, and God, I know uh, that's not part of your Amen. Character. Amen. Mm, uh, amen. Uh, when we understand that L, L is God, uh, as on my pole, uh, Amen. Uh, the all powerful one. Uh, there's nothing uh, that God can't do. Uh, amen. L stands. Uh, amen. For God uh, in all of his strength uh, and might. Uh, and so David says that I'm living, uh, amen, in the light uh, of that power. The, the, he is the Lord. Uh, that is, he is Jehovah, the God of covenant. Uh, when God makes a promise, uh, he's not like a man. Uh, if he told you how uh, I'm going to bring you out. Uh, guess what? Uh, he's going to bring you out. Uh, uh, don't look at the circumstances, uh, but you've got to learn how to stand uh, on God's word. Uh, uh, Bobo may be acting up, uh, uh, but you got to make it up in your mind. Uh, I'm standing uh, on the word of God. Uh, uh, see, he is the God, uh, a man who reads. Uh, uh, a man, he is the God that is designed, uh, a man, to enter into a saving contract with men. 
They even said that I'm living in that light. Uh, you've got to be able to recognize what you got when you've got God in your life. Uh, he is Adam uh, The Lord is or my Lord. Uh, amen. Render that he's my sovereign God. Uh, well, if he's your sovereign God, uh, he, that means that he can defy gravity. Uh, when you should have failed, guess what? God holds you up. Uh, when you should have lost uh, your mind, God keeps your mind. Uh, when you should have died, uh, God said you shall not die, but you shall live. Uh, amen. And so now David expresses it like this. Uh, he said, there thou art my my Lord and my goodness, uh, amen, extended unto me. Uh, David said that I'm satisfied with God. Uh, and I need to ask you today, uh, are you satisfied uh, with God in your life? Uh, let, let me tell you as I begin to close here, uh, amen, that there were many, amen, that chose uh, a man to do it God's way. Uh, because when you do it God's way, uh, amen, God said, I will anoint you. Uh, and you know, if I would use my biblical imagination, uh, I would tell you uh, that it didn't make sense, uh, amen, when he told Noah, uh, I want you to build an ark, uh, because it's going to rain. Now, uh, you know it never rained before, uh, amen, and him and Noah going around, uh, saying it's going to rain. Uh, it's going to rain. Uh, he met everybody looking at him crazy. He uh, said, this don't make sense. Uh, it's never rained. Uh, but Noah uh, wasn't concerned about popularity. Uh, he was concerned about pleasing God. Uh, look at your neighbor. Uh, he said, didn't the rain come down? Uh, oh, yes it did. Uh, the, well, it didn't stop them. The, because old Abraham, uh, the, he told him, you're going to be the father of, the, of many nations. Uh, the, and he said, in your old age, uh, the, you're going to have a son. Uh, well, Abraham wasn't popular uh, with everybody, uh, but he was a man of faith. Uh, and because he believed God, uh, uh, guess what? Uh, uh, amen. He had a son uh, when his wife was well past uh, the age of childbearing. Uh, I want you to know there's power in the anointing. Uh, well, we can't stop them. Uh, here come baby Moses. Uh, uh, amen. They said, I'd rather suffer uh, amen, the afflictions uh, with the people of God uh, rather than have all of the riches, uh, a man of Egypt, uh, he went through, uh, but didn't God bring him out, uh, didn't God anoint him, uh, you can't part the Red Sea uh, if you're not living in the presence of God, uh, you can't speak to the rock uh, if you're not living in the presence of God, uh, you can't make the water uh, that was parted and bittersweet uh, if you're not I'm living in the presence of God. Uh, when Elijah, uh, amen, slew uh, the 750 prophets of Baal, uh, he wasn't popular, uh, but he was anointed. Uh, amen. Uh, and so I need to tell you today that uh, you've got to ask yourself uh, if you're satisfied uh, with God in your life. Because if you're satisfied with God, uh, you learn how to not listen to the naysayers. Uh, if you're satisfied with God, uh, you're not worrying about what people think about your walk with God. Amen. If you're satisfied with it. Because if you're satisfied with God, it means that you're comfortable with God. As a lot of folks, well, what are the people going to say? Well, you know what? God never asked our opinion. Amen. God just asked us to be obedient. Amen. And he says the quickest way for you to be blessed is to obey. Amen. 
you, 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 you know, oftentimes the people that want to blame God for what's going bad in their life, check out their record. Things are going bad because they didn't take his advice. They're doing wrong things but expecting God to rescue. God can't go against his word. If you're living a ragged life, if, 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 if you're stealing from God, you're stealing from your neighbor, you're stealing from the government, but now you want God to bless you? Oh no, because if you're satisfied with God, God says that I will open up the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing that you won't be able to receive. David said in Psalms 37 and 25, I have been young and now I'm old. He said, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging for bread. See, if you follow God, and, and, and you know sometimes we got some stubborn will. We, we got to try to dissect everything. But, but listen, if God doesn't open up your understanding, it's not going to be open anyhow. He told you to obey. Well, I don't see it. He didn't say see it. He said obey it. Because when you're satisfied, you're going to lay down and say, that was good. Well, God is saying the same thing, that if you trust me, God says, it doesn't matter how the storm comes. God said, I'll teach you how to ride on the carrot of the storm. The eagle never fights the wind. The eagle rides on the carrot. But many of us are trying to fight the wind. You were not designed to fight it. You were designed to yield to it and make it work for your advantage. But that wisdom comes from living in the presence of God. And, and, and so today, if that's you, if you're not living in the presence of God, you have not received the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the wind of God, the breath of God, the spirit of God. And God is saying, I want to fill you with my spirit.